but I still was carrying around my script of uh, Days of Wine and Roses. And I offered it to Fox when I was going to leave television, because I didn't mind staying at Fox. I lived right near there. I thought it was very convenient, and I liked it. Uh, but they decided not. By this time, I had cast in it Jack Lemmon and Lee Remick. And uh, through a long thing of circumstances, which I don't want to really go into in the story, it was to be directed by Blake Edwards. So Blake was a strong, strong choice of Jack Lemmon, who had done some movies with him. Absolutely wanted him. There was no way out of it. And so I had this package now. And I, I did control the script. And at Fox, this is the thinking, is he? Buddy Adler said, well, I'm glad you want to come back to your original contract here with me and not in the television. Because he didn't like television at all. Well, don't talk to me about television. And he said, uh, Martin, you've got a great setup here. You've got Jack Lemon, Lee Remick, and Blake Edwards. The great setup for a wonderful comedy. Why are you married to this drear show about two alcoholics? And I said, we cannot have this conversation. Jack, this is the show. Jack has waited a year for me to get over my nonsense of doing television here and everything. He wants to do this script. That's what he will do. He said, well, I don't, I, I don't think we want to do it. I'm going to have it come up at our meeting. Anyway, they didn't. So I started peddling it. Suddenly, this thing that we thought was going to be such a hot property, I was peddling all over town with a black robe and not getting it sold. And I finished all the rounds, and there was no major stu I, I only wanted a studio that's going to put up all the money. I wasn't going to start doing selling the Scandinavian rights, you know, and all of that. And um, uh, we, we uh, were striking out. I mean, I did the best I could in the pitch. And uh, somebody said, you know, you can go around once and get no's all around, but then if you do it again, <laughs> it's change, things change, you never know. And Lemon, I didn't know how long I could hold on to him, and he said, I'll go anywhere with you to do this. We'll do it on the streets of New York. We'll just do it. We won't. We won't. Anyway, we'll do it. So wild, time, wild talk and everything. This time, Jack Warner said, how much does it cost? And I said, well, the budgets we've had, very low. Oh, it's like two and a half million dollars. I mean, it was a small picture in there. And uh, then budgets were very low, you know. So... He said, we'll do it, we'll do it, you do it. You got these people? I said, yes, I've got these people. I wouldn't tell you I did. And luckily, nobody defaulted. I had them. And we got Charles Bickford back. From, he was the only one I took from the television show. And uh, he was very good in it. And uh, so we made a very good picture in black and white, which was against it. You know, Even Warner complained about that. But I didn't want all that bloody shot eyes. And, all of this. And black and white was very dramatic for it. And it succeeded. It didn't do big, any big box office, but certainly made its money. And it did uh, uh, quite well.